The following podcast was made possible by the sponsorship of Teresa Leong Lee and by Catholic Digital Resources, where you can find downloadable faith formation resources and evangelization tools. Visit Catholic Digital Resources at CatholicDR.com to build your own faith and the faith of others. That's CatholicDR.com. Good News Ministries of GNM.org presents Footsteps to Heaven Life's a journey full of challenges. Sometimes we get stalled. Sometimes we get sidetracked. When we walk with Jesus and the power of the Holy Spirit to the destination that God the Father designed for us, the results are better than we could ask for or imagine. And now, here is your host, Terry Modica. As we continue this series on going deeper into the Mass, we're now going to look at the Gloria. The Gloria is that hymn that we sing right after the penitential rite. The timing of the Gloria is important. It comes immediately after the penitential rite for a reason. We sing our praises to God after we've opened ourselves to the healing of our souls. When we receive healing, we rejoice. We give God thanks by consciously being aware of what we are seeking in the penitential rite, the healing of our souls that we are seeking. We are then motivated to give thanks and praise and glory to God that he has healed us, that he has forgiven us, that our souls are now different than they were when we entered into church before mass began. Having received forgiveness, We want to sing praises to God and give him our gratefulness as a community. We are grateful that Jesus died on the cross for us to take away the sins that we thought about during the penitential rite. We sing glory because we are excited that we've been set free from the enslavement of those sins. In a spirit of thanksgiving, we sing or pray the Gloria together, the priest and the lady together as one body. This is when we begin to really enter into celebrating the glory of God. All of Mass is a celebration. We call it a celebration for a reason. It is meant to be a party. The coming together of the body of Christ, the coming together of the people of God, people who share the same faith, the same beliefs that we do. Like-minded people, yes, we have our differences. And some are more deeply into the faith than others. But we share Christ together. We share belief in Christ together. This is cause for celebration. But when we came into Mass, we entered as people who still had sins enslaving us, sins that have been a detriment to our souls, sins that have hurt others. We've been set free from that now. Because of that penitential rite that was covered in the last episode, We have been set free from all that divides us from each other and all that divides us from God. Therefore, we celebrate. And the Gloria is when we really begin to enter into that spirit of celebration. The Gloria is meant to inspire thanksgiving, awe, appreciation, wonder, and everything that that gives us joy in our relationship with God. The words of the Gloria come from Luke chapter 2, verse 14. At the birth of the Savior, and I'm going to read Luke chapter 2, beginning with verse 8, to put it into context. At the birth of the Savior, there were shepherds residing in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks by night. Just then, an angel of the Lord appeared before them, and the glory of the Lord shone all around them. Imagine that out in the dark field at night. Maybe the moon was shining, maybe it wasn't, but they did not have electric lights anywhere. So today, you know, in in most of where we live, most of the places where we who are listening to this podcast live are in the middle of what's called light pollution. Light that, that comes from the city nearby or the, the, the street lights or whatever. And we never quite see the night as dark as those shepherds did. So all of a sudden, as the scripture says, the glory of the Lord shone all around them, brightening up 
the scenery. At first they were terrified, the scripture tells us. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all people. Today in the city of David a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. Yay! And this shall be a sign to you. You will find a baby lying in a manger. And suddenly there appeared with the angel a great multitude of the heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to those upon whom his favor rests. There's the beginning of the Gloria, the glory that we sing or pray. It's meant to be sung. I'll get into that in a minute. There it is. But look at it in the context of what's happening here. A great multitude of angels suddenly appeared before the shepherds, praising God. How do you think this heavenly song affected the shepherds? They were already amazed from seeing the apparition of an angel and hearing the long-awaited announcement of the arrival of the Messiah. You can imagine how excited they were over that and in awe and, and maybe pinching themselves, is this real? Hey, do you see what I see? But then suddenly... A great multitude of angels appear. Imagine what that was like. They appeared right out of nowhere. What if that happened to you today? These angels were singing a song of worship. Imagine if a whole host of angels appeared before you today. What would they be doing? I think they would be doing the same thing, singing a song of worship again. Praising God Almighty. Praising God because he has given us his Savior and we are following that Savior. We are accepting what Jesus did for us on the cross. If you had the experience that those shepherds did right now today, how would it make you feel? That's the feeling that we should be having every time we sing the Gloria at Mass. Remember that in church we are united to the whole community of saints those who follow Christ on earth, those we are in congregation with right there, but all the body of Christ on earth, those who have died and are with him now in heaven or in purgatory, and all the holy angels. We are united to all of these, all of this community of saints in every mass. So when we go to church, we are surrounded by a multitude of heavenly hosts every time. Ask the Holy Spirit to reveal to you sometime what this really looks like. Ask the Holy Spirit to reveal to you, to open your eyes, that heavenly hosts of the communion of saints that's surrounding you there in that church. Keep asking the Holy Spirit day after day until it happens. He wants you to see it. He really does. This is supposed to be part of our faith life, being aware of the angels that we're surrounded by and the, the saints who are in heaven. And I'm including those who are in purgatory in this because, hey, a saint is anybody who is getting to heaven even if they're still being purged to fully arrive, fully enjoy the benefits of heaven. Ask the Holy Spirit to help you see all the communion of saints that are celebrating Mass with you. And when you see it, you will see layer upon layer of holy beings facing the Eucharist and worshiping him with the communion of saints. When you sing the Gloria, you are singing it with all those invisible beings, all those angels, all those saints, including your loved ones who have passed on to live in eternity with the Lord. Who are you missing? Who are you grieving because they are not with you on earth anymore? They are united to you in this Gloria through what happens in the Mass, through what Jesus did on the cross for all of us, through all of us being followers of Christ and brothers and sisters of Christ, children of God the Father. The Mass brings us together with all all of our loved ones who have passed on before us and who are with the Lord now. Verse 15 says that when the angels had left the shepherds and returned to heaven, 
The shepherds said to one another, Let us go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened that the angels told us about. Can you imagine their excitement? Singing or reciting the Gloria should motivate the same excitement within us. The shepherds ran in haste to see the newborn Messiah. If we are fully and consciously participating in the Mass, we are now emotionally running in haste to see Jesus being rebirthed through the changing of the bread and wine into his body and blood. That's what should be happening in the Gloria. As we are praying, singing, worshiping God in the Gloria, we are emotionally excited, running spiritually to the Lord, looking forward to what is about to happen in the rest of Mass. The shepherds ran to see the baby Jesus we have come to church to see the bread and the wine become the body and blood of Jesus. The entire hymn of the Gloria is rich in faith and praise for God. Let's go over those words. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you. We're saying to the Lord, we bless you. Why do we bless God? You know, I mean, don't blessings come from God? To say that we bless you, Lord, is to say thank you for all of your goodness. I give you the goodness that is in me. When God blesses us, he is giving us the goodness that is in him. When we bless God, we are giving him the goodness that is in us. We adore you. We glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, is that how we are praying this? If we are in an occasion where it is just being recited as a prayer rather than a song, are we going, glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace to people of goodwill. We praise you. We bless you. We adore you. We glorify you. Ho oh, hum. We give you thanks for your great glory. Let's mean it, my friends. Let's sing it like we mean it. Let's pray it like we mean it. Let's sing it with our whole spirit as well as our whole body. Let me ask you this question. Does your body control your spirit or does your spirit control your body? During Mass, I can't help but let my body react to what is going on in my spirit. In some cultures, everyone is doing it. Everyone is being moved bodily by what is going on in the spirit. But in my culture... We're all supposed to be very staid and stoic and standing like statues. I'm sorry, I can't help it, but I've got to do more than that. I have got to be true to this, what's going on inside of me. And I hold it down a little bit. You know, I'm not dancing in the aisles, though I might like to be. <laughs> but if you are attending one of the masses where I'm at, you will see that I'm doing at least a little bit of bebopping with the music there because I am worshiping God with my whole being, my whole spirit, my whole mind, my whole soul, my whole body. And I want to, to worship God and, and glorify God with my whole life. This is what we should all be desiring. This is what we should all be trying to accomplish and let happen during the Gloria of the Mass. We've first done our praises to God the Father. We're ending the, the first part of the Gloria by saying, Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father. And now we move into worshiping Jesus, God who is Jesus, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son. And by the way, only begotten Son, the word begotten Son is not referring to the fact that Jesus came after God the Father. Begotten Son means came from the Father, but is one with the Father and existed from all time with the Father. It's more than a father-son relationship. It's more than Jesus was birthed from the Father's seed, like in human life. But it's the love of the Father sp spins off into our lives as Jesus the Son. And so the Gloria goes on, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God. Immediately, it's a reminder that Jesus is God, not an offspring who was born later. 
Lord God, Lamb of God. And there's a reference to Jesus being the sacrificial lamb that is going to become the Eucharist that we receive later in the Mass. Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Then we repeat this because it is so important. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. And you know what? He does. In the Gloria we say, You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. And you know what? He gives us that mercy. We're not here in this hymn begging God, trying to change Jesus' mind to give us his mercy because we don't deserve it, but give it to us anyways. It's a statement. You do take away the sins of the world, Jesus. Have mercy on us. And he is he's celebrating with us. He is singing with us. And he is saying, I give you my mercy. Yes. And then we continue. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. In other words, he alone is able to forgive us our sins I mean, with the Father and the Holy Spirit, because they are all one God. But he alone is able to get us into heaven. No other person who ever lived as a human being can do that. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit. And now we bring in the fullness of the Trinity into this hymn. In the glory of God the Father, amen. We know that the angels composed the first words of this hymn, but do you know where the rest of it came from? The Gloria is one of the oldest hymns of the church. We don't know who composed the rest of the lyrics, but we can trace it back to the 3rd century of the church. Tradition holds that it was first composed as a prayer in the East and then translated into Latin by St. Hilary of Poitiers around the year 360. Our current translation retains some of the structure of the stanzas and the poetry of the original Latin text. That text has a cadence and a rhythm to it because it was always intended to be sung as a hymn. After the Gloria comes the opening prayer, called the Collect. The priest says, let us pray, followed by the words of the Collect. The words of the Collect vary from week to week, or even mass to mass, because they reflect the theme of the scriptures that we are going to hear. The Collect and the words that are chosen for it set the stage for the theme of the scriptures that will come next during the celebration of Mass. You know, it's beneficial to have an app or a book that you can read before Mass to actually read the Collect ahead of time and think about how it connects to the scriptures that you're about to hear at Mass. The Collect can be used in your prayer time in the morning each day or at the end of your day at night before going to sleep. Make it available to yourself. For example, O God, who in the abasement of your Son has raised up a fallen world, fill your faithful with holy joy. For on those you have rescued from slavery to sin, you bestow eternal gladness. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. We can reflect on those words and turn it into an even bigger prayer. O God, who in the abasement of your Son have raised up a fallen world. Yes, Lord, we live in a world that is surrounded by evil. I see evil everywhere that I look. Everywhere that I turn, I'm up against it. I come face to face with demonic strongholds. I come face to face with people doing evil, people causing problems, people who are hurting themselves and hurting others through their sins. And yes, I too have been contributing to this with my own sins, but you have filled your faithful with holy joy, for on those you have rescued from slavery to sin, you have bestowed eternal gladness. So, and this is how, for example, you can continue praying in this. So, Lord, thank you for rescuing me from my own sins. Thank you that I am called your faithful now and that you are filling me with holy joy. Lord, I need more of that joy. Help me to realize through you the joy that comes from the holy life. Not just the joy of things going my way, but holy joy. The joy that comes from being united to you. Help me, Lord Jesus, to see your joy so that I can know that that same joy belongs to me. That's just an example of how 
you can use a collect in your daily prayer time to great value. And if you do this before Mass, take the time to do this before Mass. Then when the priest says that prayer, you're entering more fully into it. And Mass that comes afterward, everything that comes after it, and especially this moment of Mass, is more deeply meaningful. Why would we not want to do that? Why would we want to be so busy at home or wherever we're coming from before Mass that we don't take the time to do this, to take time to pray like this, to get deeper into what is going to be happening at Mass by preparing ahead of time? Why miss that opportunity? It doesn't make sense. After the priest prays the collect, there's supposed to be, supposed to be, a period of profound silence to give us time to collect our thoughts and to reflect on what is about to take place. This is what is called for in liturgical norms that have been prescribed. There is supposed to be a profound silence long enough to give the people in the congregation time to reflect. We are now about to move from praising God to thinking about our own prayer intentions, the prayer requests that we want to bring to the Lord during the Mass. Unfortunately, this moment is all too often rushed. But God wants us to move from praising Him first and foremost, seek first the kingdom of God, and all other things will then be added into our lives. Praise God first, seek Him first, worship Him first, and then we're in the right frame of mind, the right spirit, to ask Him for, our help, for the help that we need, to ask Him to come into our lives more deeply, to give Him our prayer requests for ourselves and for those that we are praying for. That's why the priest begins the collect with, let us pray. And the words of the collect are meant to be more deeply embraced than just simply rushing through it during Mass and overlooking this little tiny, it doesn't take up much time during the Mass, this collect. It's so easy to overlook it, so easy to forget about it once we've finished it. But yet it has great treasures within it. And this is the end of the introductory rites of Mass. After this silence that comes after the collect, we move into the Liturgy of the Word. And the Liturgy of the Word is what we will dig into next to find new treasures in it in the next episode. For now, let us end this episode with prayer. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Lord, I ask you to help each and every person listening to this podcast to know how very deeply you care about them and how very delighted you are when you receive their praise and their worship. Lord God, you have said in Scripture that we are to give you a sacrifice of praise. If anyone who is listening to this podcast is not filled with joy, is going through hard times, when they go to Mass, help them to experience your supernatural joy. Help them to turn their sorrows and hardships, their sufferings, into a sacrifice of praise by being filled with praise and worship during the Gloria of Mass. Help them to be lifted up, raised up, resurrected in your joy, Lord Jesus, through the praise and worship of the Gloria. Help each one who needs it, Lord. Holy Spirit, come and help each person who needs it to experience by forcing their lips to open with your Gloria. Receive them, this gift of them forcing it out of themselves. Receive it as a precious gift, O Lord. And help them to be filled with the praise that the words are really intending. Come, Holy Spirit, fill us 
Come, Holy Spirit, renew us. And each one of us listening to this, say this last bit of this prayer that I always end with. Say it for yourself. Take ownership of it. Come, Holy Spirit, you have my permission to change me. Alleluia! Glory to God in the highest. Amen. This podcast was made possible by supporters of Good News Ministries who hope to strengthen and build your faith. If this episode speaks to your heart, then I ask you to pass it along to your family and friends. Share it on Facebook and Twitter. Forward it by text and email. And let us know what the Holy Spirit is doing in your life. How has this episode made a difference? You can contact me through the Good News Ministries website at gnm.org or by texting me if you are one of our subscribers on WhatsApp. May I ask a favor of you? Please cover this life-changing podcast ministry in your daily prayers. And if you can, help me continue making these podcasts by becoming a sponsor. Any donation is helpful, but we are especially seeking sponsors for upcoming episodes. You've been listening to Terry Modica of Good News Ministries. For more faith builders or to learn more about this ministry, come visit our website at gnm.org. You'll find online resources and lots more to help you know the Father's love and grow closer to Christ and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Visit gnm.org today.